to begin this process, um, let's begin with this first piece of asset, right? So I noticed that a lot of speakers uh, in the industry that I'm in, um, they, w when they start speaking and when they start getting success in speaking and closing and upsells and all of that, um, many speakers would get stuck in the one to three million dollar mark a year. And the reason why they get stuck there is because it becomes like a circus show. And what I mean by that is they start speaking, they start getting good at it, they start being good at making offers, and that becomes their entire business. They speak, they either get paid per keynote, or if they're good at closing, then they start speaking and they close, and then they start working with other organizers and they go from city to city or country to country. Um, it's like they set up the tent, after the weekend, right, circus ends, tent goes down, they go to the next city, and they become so reliant on the system of speaking and selling and closing from stage that ultimately, they're still trading time for money. Yes, it's a pretty good income, but they get stuck in that one to three million dollar mark. And I had that realization a long time ago. So I'm always very clear as when I'm doing this speaking gig, even like this event right now, the question that's in my mind is, how does this become an asset that works for me forever? Okay, so let's talk about these different assets that you need to be creating um, every time you are trading your time for money. While I believe that it's crucial to be doing this starting out, everybody, we all, we all have to trade our time for money at some point in time, but we gotta be clear about the end game. Okay, so what is the end game? The first asset that we will be creating in everything that we do is the creation of the social asset. And this is literally what this entire event is about, okay? Creating content that lives on social media that lives on forever. So um, I'm sure most of you might have seen this ad over here. Um, I'm always thinking about creating ads that is entertaining with information um, because we are now living in the world of infotainment, right? So this is a rap video that is also an ad that got over 1.5 million views um, since Funnel Hacking Live um, that we, when we released this over 10 months ago, okay? Um, how many of you here, you've seen this ad? How many of you here, you've not seen this ad? Oh, really? Wow, 90 per okay, so, um, <laughs> Okay, let me just quickly play you this video to show you the thought process behind um, why I do what I do. Okay, let me just quickly play this video. Oh, that was awesome, man. How did I do? You did okay, man. But you really should read this. I remember when I used to be nine. I had this idea that I was meant to shine People told me give up on your dreaming Now the same people are in my audience streaming I wish that I could travel back in time to then I'd get down on my knees and speak to little pain Tell him to achieve it, he's got to believe it And that is stronger and more powerful than Jaden saying Now I'm on the stage and my face is on the page And I'm swinging for the fences like I own a batting cage Creating butterflies and caterpillars By believing in yourself and learning these five pillars Selling the tickets If you don't know how to do this Then the room will be crickets Getting them to show up Facebook retargeting ads that will blow up Fulfilling the event Over deliver on your promise Make them glad that they win Value based upselling The rush of the table rush is super compelling Did you know that more people say Their number one worst fear in the world Is the fear of public speaking Worse than the fear of drowning Even worse than the fear of death That means that an average person goes to the funeral is actually better off in the casket than delivering the eulogy. But all that goes away the minute you stop focusing on yourself and start focusing on others. Now I'm on the stage and my face is on the page and I'm swinging for the fences like I own a batting cage. From days then confused to natural born killers by believing in yourself and learning these five pillars. Selling the tickets if you don't know how to do this then the room will be crickets. Getting them to show up, Facebook retargeting ads that will blow up. Fulfilling the event over deliver on your promise Make them glad that they win Value-based upselling The rush of the table rush is super compelling
You're probably wondering, hey Ping, you keep saying five pillars, but you only mentioned four in the song? I guess you could say it was my clever way of putting the hook inside my hook, but if you really want to know, pillar five is all about leveraging the event so you get the most out of it to make it easier for you for your next one. But none of that matters until you learn and apply the first four pillars. And in case you forgot and wonder what they were... Selling the tickets, if you don't know how to do this, then the room will be cricket. Getting them to show up, Facebook retargeting ads that will blow up. Fulfilling the event over deliver on your promise, make them bad and they win. Value based upselling, the rush of the table rush is super compelling. One life, one stage. <laughs> so uh, this ad over here, which was really an ad promoting uh, a front-end funnel for uh, one of my free plus shipping products, um, what's the payoff on this, right? So I'm always thinking about if I had the opportunity to create an ad, how can I have these different elements where there's information, I'm teaching some sort of framework, right? But also integrating uh, entertainment into it um, so that I am create, getting these engagements, likes, comments, and shares to really maximize the ROI on the ads, okay? So this is the first thing that you could be thinking about uh, when it comes to creating social content. This ad here will be evergreen and it will make me a lot of money as well as the reach um, for a really long time to come, okay? So uh, when it comes to content, um, the next type of social content that you could be creating are long-form, tactical, keyword-rich YouTube videos, okay? Now, to give you an idea, this was a really old YouTube video that I uploaded in my channel um, in 2012. And in 2012, um, I used to be really in, into CrossFit until, you know, when you start hurting your back a couple of times. Um, anyway, so um, in 2012, I went to CrossFit Games and I sat in front and I didn't think much about it, but I shot this video of Rich Froning doing this workout called Fran. And all I did was I uploaded it online. I called it Rich Froning Does Fran CrossFit Games 2012. And this one video um, had about 600,000 plus views um, since it was uploaded. And the thing about this is when I uploaded it, there wasn't any strategy involved. I didn't think much about it. I just called it what it was. I, I, I didn't have any tags. I didn't optimize it. Um, and this video got me a lot of views, but it actually hurt my channel. And the reason why it hurt my channel was because uh, YouTube thought that my channel was like a fitness-related channel. And because of that, it kind of screwed my algorithm on my channel a little bit. Um, and, and that's why I had to take it off and make it unlisted. Now, what does this mean for you? It means this. It means that moving forward, another type of social content that you could be creating, that you should be doing, is these type of long-form, keyword-rich videos that goes on YouTube based on what people are searching for. So the tactical side of it would be this. It means that whenever you are creating video, you want to reverse engineer and start off by keyword hacking. Everyone say keyword hacking. <laughs> okay, thank you. So keyword hacking is really just going on um, Google Keyword Planner that's one tool, or using another um, Chrome plugin, it's called Keywords Everywhere, okay? And all you're doing is you start off by doing your keyword research to see what are people searching for in the online world, in your market, in your niche, in your industry, okay? So how many of you here, you have done, you've put up a YouTube video and nobody watched it? on the show of hands, right? Okay, thank you. And I've done that so many times. In fact, most of the time, you, you know, nobody really watches my stuff when I was uh, uh, just starting out. And the reason was because I was utilizing the method most marketers would utilize, which is the hope and pray method. 
they would upload a video and then they would hope and pray that this video gets engagement. However, if you begin with the end in mind by doing the keyword research first and understand tactically that these are what people are searching for every month, um, then you will be able to create content based on what people are searching for. So the way to think about this is that YouTube is not a social media platform. YouTube is a search engine, right? So unlike Facebook, if you create a video on Facebook, if you don't get any reach or views on Facebook after 24, 48 hours, chances are nobody will see it ever. It will get buried in the newsfeed. YouTube on the other hand is different. YouTube on the other hand is if you create a video that is long form, that's tactical, that is keyword rich, and if you optimize it, over time, it will keep getting you more leads, more views, more visibility, more clicks, more traffic. Now, this was something that I didn't understand or see the importance when I first started out in my content creation journey. And I wish, I so wish, when I first started out years ago, that out of all the events that I went to, somebody told me that, Ping Jun, if you started off creating content on YouTube today, you will see the payoffs forever, okay? Now, I didn't understand the importance of this because I started off, if you follow me, I started off with Facebook first, building my following there through ads. And then after that, I went on taking my attention to Instagram and then only into YouTube. I was late, I'm really late into the YouTube game. But this is something that I realized was a mistake and that's why we pivoted our uh, strategy starting uh, the third quarter of last year, okay? So it, it basically means this. It means that if you think about YouTube, YouTube is about SEO and we wanna make SEO great again. Now, the, the reason we wanna make SEO great again is, is because of this, okay? Now, how many of you here, you've been marketing online for 10 years or longer? 10 years or longer, show of hands. Okay, thank you. Now, if you have been marketing online for 10 years or more, you will know that a decade ago, it was very common amongst marketers to sell online training in the topic of SEO. SEO was huge, right? And the reason why SEO was huge a decade ago was because Facebook ads, Instagram, and all these different social media platforms, they weren't there yet. So people had to rely on search engine optimization and the tactics and strategies in order to get traffic, right? But notice what happened when Facebook ads took off, when Instagram stories and Instagram and other platforms came about. What happened? Most marketers that were focusing on SEO, they dropped the ball, and they went into Facebook, right? And the majority of marketers just jumped on the social media bandwagon and abandoned SEO completely. Now, if you take a look at the whole funnel hacker community and you take a look at the popularity of SEO, you will know that less than 1% of marketers utilize SEO as one of their traffic strategies, right? Most of the time, the common thing is always Facebook or Instagram. Now, but if you think about this, is that it's all about supply and demand, right? The demand, the demand for SEO is basically the people that is going on Google, the search engines, and doing the search, that's the demand for a specific keyword. Right, the people on the search engines doing a specific search. Now, if you think about this, 10 years ago, search on search engines versus today, the search on search engines on Google, do you think demand decreased? Do you think fast forward today, there are less people doing searches on search engines? What do you think? No, not at all, right? If anything at all, it might have either stayed the same or increased, right? Chances are the amount of people doing searches on search engines have either stayed the same or increased. Now, at the same time, think about what happened to supply. 
Now, what is supply? Supply is the amount of competition and other marketers in your market, in your industry, in your niche, trying to create content based around those keywords. Now, again, 10 years ago, SEO was a huge topic. Marketers be constantly trying to up their game and implement traffic strategies related to SEO. But because social media came along, what did these marketers do? They dropped the ball on SEO and they, they went along and followed Facebook, Instagram, because that was the low hanging fruit, which should be the case. But if you think about supply then, it means that competition and supply for this keyword has actually decreased, right? There are less marketers now trying to compete on these keywords because they have shifted their focus away from SEO into social media. Now, if demand has either stayed the same or increased, and if supply has decreased in economics, if I draw that chart, right? What does that mean? It means that the payoff, if you were to focus in SEO, would increase. Why? Because now there is less competition and there is more demand, right? So in other words, if you were to implement this, okay? So if you understand this from a big picture perspective, let's talk about the tactical implementation side of things, okay? What does this mean for you? It means that for this first step here, one of the things you wanna be doing is to list out these different long form tactical videos based on these different main keywords that you wanna target, okay? So for example, this is a spreadsheet that my team uses um, that they built for me, which is the deliverables for um, the content team. Um, and we have a spreadsheet that is based upon these different topics, whether it's Instagram, affiliate marketing, sales, Facebook, passive income, make money online. And there are all these long form keywords. Now, how do we create these long form keywords? These long form keywords is a mix of both keyword rich, everyone say keyword rich, keyword with a hook, okay? So what makes a great title for SEO is to create something that has got these two elements, something that is keyword rich based upon what people are searching for, and you can do this based on the Google Keyword Planner or Keywords Everywhere, okay, that's the first piece, and integrate it with some sort of hook or pattern interrupt so that people want to click and watch that video that gets ranked on YouTube or the search engines. So for example, um, if you take a look at this first example, I know it looks really small, let me just read it out. It says, lead generation with Instagram marketing in 2020, how to get your first client right now, okay? So this keyword here um, is probably lead gen Instagram marketing right? But if it's just something that is keyword rich based on what people are searching for, it's boring, right? So it's good for the search engines, but it doesn't necessarily mean that people might click or want to watch because there, you want to have some sort of curiosity um, or hook to get people's attention, okay? So number two would be um, how to create swipe up link on Instagram stories without 10K followers. Now, this is based on what people are searching for. So what my team does is they will compile an entire list of topics based on what people are searching for, plus integrate it with some sort of hook so that it's a, now an interesting watch or an interesting read, okay? So I'm, we're, they're always thinking about um, keyword rich plus hook. Maybe the hook could be like the five things they don't want you to know the three secrets that will change, will get you an unfair advantage this year, right? So these type of words has got no real search value, but increases the odds of somebody wanting to watch your video, okay? So um, this is something that you wanna definitely implement when you leave this room. So I'm not just gonna give you the tactics and the strategies as well. I'm gonna be talking about actual implementation steps that you want to utilize. Um, by either doing it yourself 
or getting somebody from your team to go uh, do it for you. Okay, so this is um, how you start it off by building up this list of long tail keywords based upon content that you should be creating. Um, then the next one, what is another type of social asset? Another type of social asset, again, a social asset is something that you create once that will live on forever, okay, for a really long time to come. The next one is what I call uh, mother retargeting ads. Now, for every sales funnel that you build, um, one of the things that I love doing, especially for all of my retargeting ads, is to have these main ads for every single funnel to keep all of the social proof, the comments, likes, on shares on this one main post, okay? So to give you an example, this is a mother retargeting ad for one of my live events for people who expressed interest to come for my event but did not sign up yet. So for every single person that meets this criteria, either landed on the page but did not buy tickets to event, what do I do? I send them to an ad that looks like this, and on this specific ad, all of the comments, all of the likes, all of the shares, I do not dilute them by having different ad IDs. I make sure that they're all going to the same ad so that this ad acts as social proof, okay? So for your retargeting ads, a social asset that you want to be creating that lives on forever is to have this one main ad where you will get either your buyers, people who have trained with you, and at this post URL into your follow-up campaigns, into your buyer's email sequence and say, I would love to find out what your biggest takeaways are and what you learned most from product name. Um, and if you, uh, and I just made this post over here, and if you could just um, make a comment on this post to let me know what your biggest takeaway is, that would help me help a lot more people out there. So guess what? So now this post is in your follow-up email sequence, is getting you likes, is getting you comments, and now it's being used as a retargeting ad. So when people go through your funnel, and if they haven't bought yet, now if they're on the fence, they are seeing all these positive comments, and now they're thinking, surely all these people can't be lying, right? And they actually get to see these comments over time. So it's not like a sudden surge of comments on, in one day. You can see like from this screenshot over here, it's like comments from a year ago, right? So now there's just an overwhelm of social proof contained on one post, okay? Now, as I am talking about these things, um, if you want to really make the most out of this uh, session today, really start thinking about the things that you feel is most crucial for you when it comes to implementation. Uh, one of the things that I love doing is whenever I'm taking notes at events, um, if I feel that there's something that really resonates with me that I know I absolutely need to implement, um, on the last page of my book, I usually have something that says like action steps um, and I'll write down all the things that I feel needs to be implemented on my part. Um, I suggest you do the same if you feel that there's you know, a few different things that you absolutely need to do um, after you leave the event. Okay, so mother retargeting ads is a great piece to create this social asset that will live for you forever. So all of my funnels, every free plus shipping funnel, every high ticket funnel, every event funnel, every webinar funnel, I will always have this at least one main ad with a very strong social proof that's in the buyer sequence or in some follow-up email sequence to get people to comment, like, and share so that I'm diverting people that visited the page, is aware of the offer, but did not buy onto that specific ad. Okay, so that's the mother retargeting ad. Um, the next type of social asset that you wanna focus on, now this is, is going to require a little bit more resource on your end, and it really depends um, how much you want to double down on your content strategy. But the next thing that you wanna be doing is to take your long-form tactical videos that you created on YouTube 
and turn it into long form articles to have it posted on your blog, on your website, submitted to Medium and focus on the old school SEO strategies. Now, the reason why this now would be a low hanging fruit and something for you to implement fairly easily is because if you began your content strategy by creating these tactical videos on YouTube, these how-to videos based on keyword-rich videos, guess what? You can now take the transcription of these videos, but if you want to go the extra mile, which is something we, we recently started doing last year, is you can take the transcription and have it repurposed. Everyone say repurposed. repurposed. Thank you. Repurposed into an actual good article with screenshots so that it doesn't sound like a transcription. Okay? This is when you can take that long form video that you did on YouTube, pass it on to someone from your team or outsource it for the ones that you feel is really good, take the transcription, send the transcription to an actual good writer who's able to edit it, add the screenshot in there, make it a really good long form tactical read so that you can either put it on your website now, that again will live on forever, or have it submitted to a third party site like Medium to get you links back to your website, okay? So this is how you start thinking about this first piece here, which is the social asset. Now, one of the things that I wanna do is, so social asset, which is the first piece out of the five assets, um, is, is going to be our main focus here today. Um, and it's, it's something I'm gonna go back to because this is what kicks everything off, okay? But I wanted to give you insight on what the five things are and so that you can see how it's connected to each and every single element in your business model, okay? So we'll come back to number one and go really deep into it. Um, but I wanna talk about the big picture overview first um, so they can understand how everything's connected. Okay, so that's number one, social asset. 